Hello, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Jake Falk, the Visual Arts Director at Acadiana Center for the Arts. I'm a practicing artist as well as a curator. And I'm joined here by Lou Swinson of Swinson Studios. Lou, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm also a practicing artist. I've been painting for about 20 years. I'm a landscape architect. So I think that has something to do with my style mm -hmm. and where I come from as far as landscape painting. And I show here at my gallery and studio on East Vermilion and would love to have you come by. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I mean, um, you know, I think when you think about places to experience art and to see art, um, there's a lot of different experiences that you can have. You can be in a gallery um, where pieces are being sold, like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you right. can go to a museum where it's a collection and you're not really going to see pieces being sold. And then you can go to the ACA where you see a mixture of everything. You right. Know, you some right. some pieces that are part of a collection, and then some piece some pieces that have already been sold, and those folks that are patrons, the collectors, they're putting it all up for for public um, viewing. Right. So that's that's the whole process. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the first steps and kind of principal steps of pricing artwork for our Student Arts Expo, which is coming up next month. And in talking to each other, Lou and I came up with a few distinct um, kind of approaches to pricing artwork. And I'll let Lou kind of explain her experience with um, how she came about with her method and what she sees works for her. And then we'll kind of continue talking about other approaches and, and whatnot. Okay. Well, as I was saying earlier, I started painting about 20 years ago and I was asked to do a show and I wasn't sure how to price my work. I mean, I was a real newbie and um, I loved what I was doing and I was passionate about what I was doing, but I didn't think, I didn't know if other people would appreciate it. So I just started doing research. And that's probably the most important thing to do when you start out is expose yourself to other people's art. It doesn't matter where you go. I mean, as long as the art has a price on it. So galleries, um, at the ACA, Art Walk, everywhere, Baton Rouge, New Orleans. I went out with a, a size in my mind that I normally do, which at the time was eight by 10 or 11 by 14, kind of a smaller size to see what other people do that are at my skill level, my expertise level. And then I created a formula, you know, a square inch formula, because I think having a background in architecture really makes me square see footage. things, you know, like formulas and everything has to be measured, yeah. you know? So I use a square inch method. And then the, the variable is my style and um, unfortunately, I think how much I like the piece, mm -hmm. um, that may not be important to some people, but it is to me. And then framing, you know, is a variable. And yeah. the other technique, which I think Jake likes the best, mm -hmm. is where you take your materials and you either double them and add an hourly wage or you triple them and go with that. Yeah. And you know, I was... Uh, I was gonna say I was taught that by a by a professor, and he told me, you know, this is because um, sometimes for me it's hard to think about that quantity, you know, the square footage and and that kind yeah. of. Thing. And you know, I work with a gallery um, in Portland, Oregon, and that's how they do it: square footage. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, it, it it helps me to look at those actual costs. Because I live so much in in the um, in the museum world, where mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of um, that's already been taken care of, so it's right. not in my brain as much. Um, but for me, it's easy to to look at the actual cost of what you know this object cost to make, yeah. cover that cost, make sure that's paid for when I sell it, and then I want to make a few more from it. So. 
you know, figure out what those materials are and then multiply it, you know, twice and then add an hourly wage. And that's at least um, the real cost of it. But I think there's also room for what you were saying where the um, sort of the meaning of the piece, how you feel about it, that should, because you're the only one making that piece of work, right? So you right. have to, you have to put a little bit of that thought into it too. And that's going to be up to the artist, I think. I think the artist can, can figure that out. But, but you're seeing also what the market will bear, mm -hmm. you know, that's really important. Mm -hmm. As you may think your piece is wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, and price it really high and think it's fabulous, but it, I mean, you need to sell art mm -hmm. to be able to make art. You have to really study the market and mm -hmm. see what it will bear. I'm a big fan, though, of, I think you should think a lot about your work and think it's highly. I mean, I don't want to be in a, a Walmart category, mm -hmm. you know, and give my work away. Right, right. So, I mean, I, I, I like to think highly of my work, although you shouldn't think too highly of it. Yeah. So there's really some weird little variables in there. Yeah. That you have to put it all together and create the package. Correct. And you know, and we were also in, when we were talking um, in preparation for this, um, there was a point at which um, I think we agreed that maybe having a tiered system of different price points of mm -hmm. what you produce right also helpful so you can yeah. make a painting that takes days and hours and the the piece right behind lou right there i know from our gallery tour yesterday yeah. took how many 70 hours is that 70 hours 70 so think hours. about what that would mean when you establish an hourly wage and materials Plus her frames are incredible. But what if you have to ship it somewhere? Ooh, that's a, that's a big cost right there. Right, it is. So you have to get into studying that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that may not be a problem in the very beginning, but later on it is. As the years go along, as you continue being a successful artist, I think, and I've done it myself, I mean, say you have a, a show like Simone just had a show here. She sold everything. Mm -hmm. So I would think she needs to bump up her price. You know, when you have a show like that and you're, and you're selling out, mm -hmm. I mean, I would think about bumping up a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I have an artist that I follow in Cape Cod who increases her the, uh, by a small percentage, her painting costs every year. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now, she just has a rule every year yeah. for an 11 by 14, it's going to go up $500. Yeah. And that, you know, makes, that makes sense as you get more and more experience with the, with the process and whatnot, and you start to know what you can sell your work at, then right. you can adjust. And, right. and kind of change that, um, you know, adjust those prices. You might be right on the right on the nose the first day that you start right. doing it, right? Right. Um, but you might not. You might start at too high a price, and maybe that's right. You might down a little bit. So and that's easy to figure out if everybody's walking around telling you how wonderful things are, mm -hmm. but they're not buying them. Yeah. You know, and I really hate to, to, to spend too much time on um, people buying and selling. I mean, that's, it's when you're an artist and you're a pure artist, you just want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just love the process. You just want to create. But uh, unfortunately, you have to sell it mm -hmm. to really keep doing it. You know, but um, that's just reality, you yeah. know. Unfortunately, you can't escape that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, I was just thinking um, when we were uh, just talking about that kind of evolution of um, of the kind of pricing of what, do what's comfortable for you. Price right. what you feel comfortable with and also don't undersell yourself. 
If you right. feel like a painting you made is two hundred dollars, you put two hundred. You know, if you if you're a seller, uh, yeah. then 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 stick with it. That's fine. Right. That's right. Do what you feel. Don't let other people tell you what to do when it comes to pricing. I mean, you 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 may screw up and do it all wrong, but you've yeah. learned. Exactly. And, but you have to do what's comfortable to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like the idea of lowering my price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. Yeah. I would rather see people start out maybe even a little low, but not too low to where it cheapens their reputation, so to speak. Right, right. And go up. You know, when you go down, it just, I don't know, there's something about yeah. going down that really I know. When I, when I was saying it earlier, I was like, I don't want to say this. I don't want to, <laughs> you know, but that might be, yeah. but that might be a, that might be something that you need to look out um, for when you are, pro when you're starting out, go yeah. ahead and start a little lower again yeah. over those costs. Yeah. Make you have sure, to yeah. make, make sure that your, um, you're thinking with a business mind. So that right. a, there's a hard cost to making these things. Cover and pay that, for your time. Pay for your time and then go a little bit more. Okay, these are covering the hard costs. This, right. is, this is what you have to ask for. Right. You can ask for lower than that because you're just making stuff to give, you know, to-, to, to Yeah, you're giving it away. Yeah. So if you- Now there's times- there's times when I do go down, but it's if somebody buys more than one piece, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give them a discount. Yeah. Ooh, and that's another good um, you know, point too. And I feel like it's maybe not a beginning um, uh, conversation, oh, but yeah. as you start to get more experienced, you want to make sure you have that area, that flexibility to be able to give a discount. Sure, so sure. that factors into your price as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so let's let's do this. So we have a few things that we touched on. We have that formula, and then we have, hey, start off at a moderate pricing. And then as you sell and you get more experienced, you kind of come up a little bit. Right. And then um, if it's something you're really interested in and you're building your body of work, it might be useful, especially if you find that you have some higher priced items to maybe figure out methods to having a, a lower tier. I think of it as a tiered system. So you have mm -hmm. the high priced oil paintings, right? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And those take a lot of time. They take a lot of energy, take a lot of materials. And they're um, expensive. They're expensive. <laughs> so that, that sits up here. And then maybe you get into printmaking. Right, so of Something course. that's repeatable. Right. Or, you know, my, my niece, is doing these little drawings on a um, iPad. So they're mm -hmm. digital drawings. I could see her printing those and selling those um, at a lower price point than Definitely. the painting. The painting that she makes. Um, so those are things to think about too. If you're, Definitely. if you, if you, you know, if you want to have something available for $20, right? what can you make that's part of your body of work that would be priced or that would cost that, right? Is, well, is probably prints, print. small prints, because you just take the cost of the print and double it or triple it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So prints are very reasonable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I only do oil, so... Mm -hmm. I, but I get prints of some of my mm -hmm. oil paintings, sometimes on canvas, sometimes on watercolor paper, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, a fifth of the cost. Exactly. So definitely, you can do that. Yeah. And then in the beginning, I just painted smaller. There you go. The, you yeah, know, that. And, <laughs> it's by the square <laughs> we, inch. We completely, a little one. <laughs> we completely blew over that. I totally, you know, going yeah, down size is not one a thing. Thing. Yeah. I wanted to mention about the square inch formula. Yeah. It's um, 
say you use five dollars a square inch you know just as an example yeah and you've got an eight by ten painting that's 80 square inches so the painting's four hundred dollars uh-huh. but if you did a 24 by 36 or 30 by 30 or a, you know 48 by 48 you wouldn't use five dollars mm. you know your factor that you're using would go down as the painting gets bigger mm-hmm. your factor goes down because gotcha. you'll quickly realize uh, i can't get that what? much for that piece exactly <laughs> i can't do a 30 by 30 would be 900 times five Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to get that for a 30 by 30. So you have to figure out, and it's trial and error and mark what the market will bear, you know, the whole deal. Mm-hmm. Your factor goes down. I think that's important to know because you can't just, you people out there that are like me that do everything by formulas. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be flexible. <laughs> yeah. So if we want to sum up, I think a good... Um, a good approach starting out. Um, you've got a body of work of 20 pieces and you're looking at them and you're like, oh man, how do I price these things? That's your question, right? Yeah. Um, I think what we've found is that it's good to have a repeatable formula, whatever that is. Yeah. Standard by which you are figuring out what that might be in your way it's figure out maybe maybe figure out what your favorite piece is and what Mm -hmm. the price is that you want for that and then break it down that's a good idea similar formula for this piece that's a little bit bigger you know and um then break it down into a square in it square inch and then you right. can apply that to the rest of the 20. That right. really falls well. into place. Um, and then I think the other thing we found is that you want to make sure you're paying for your materials. So make right. sure that's factored in. And then also make sure you're comfortable with the price, whatever that may be. Um, right. Because again, you're the only one making that work. Right. So that's worth something. And you don't want to get discouraged. So make sure that you're pricing at something that's comfortable, but not too high. That way you can always go up afterwards. Right. Right. Or go down if somebody wants to offer you a deal. Ooh, you know, I've had people go. that come to me and say, I'll give you whatever for this piece. And sometimes I say yes. And sometimes I come back with another number, mm-hmm. you know, so if you want to bargain. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I'll mention quickly. Sometimes you have to pay somebody a commission for selling your work. Ooh, that's a good one. Yep. So say you have your cost of materials and your time and you have to pay somebody 40% or 50% mm-hmm. sometimes if you're in bigger cities yeah. of that or- number goes to somebody else. Can you still make money? Mm-hmm. Or if you sell it online and there are fees. Yeah, there's fees associated. Fee. So or all shipping, those, all those things should definitely be factored in. And I mean, it gets way more complicated than, than even what we're touching on today. Today, we're just, you know, this is, these are the basics, right? And right. You get, you get 20 years, 30 years, 40 years down the road, and it's all of a sudden become very, very complicated and yeah. selling in a different state and you're based in one state, you know, that whole oh, yeah thing. yeah yeah get ready, get ready folks yeah, you know, you're <laughs> yeah just put your seatbelt on <laughs> cool thank well, you lou thank you so much um we're gonna sign off on the video um, okay go see lou at her studio which is get can you give the address in case well, people are around for art it's, uh 424 east vermilion Exactly. Right down the street. Um, right, right, right near Park Sans Souci. Right. And then, um, a little bit further down the street than the ACA. But yeah, right. come visit us at the ACA if you're ever out there.